Okay, so I made the video the other day uh, for ranking the Pink Floyd studio albums, and I mentioned at the beginning that Pink Floyd's one of my favorite bands. But also, it's one of the most frustrating bands to like, and I just sort of made a passing reference at that, but I thought I'd explain why I said that and what I meant and why it's frustrating. And um, I'll start with what's been going on, really, in the last... Well, since 2014, which is nine years now, there hasn't been a new Pink Floyd album. And um, Pink Floyd hasn't done a lot. You know, you got Roger going on world tours and stuff, but uh, not very active tour-wise or new album-wise. Uh, they came out when the war in Ukraine started. Pink Floyd recorded a new song, um, which got some play and it's not, you know, it's not an impressive piece of work. It sounds like something they just threw together and I, I, I don't hate it or anything. It's just not, not something that I look forward to listening to. So you've got that, you've got that new song. I think it's called Rise Up or something like that. And it's sung by a Ukrainian guy singing in Ukraine. And then, uh, last week you got Polly Sampson, who's the wife of, David Gilmour, you know, she writes a lot of the lyrics on The Division Bell and, you know, On an Island for David Gilmour and the other solo album, um, Rattle That Lock. And she went off and, and basically hate-tweeted Roger Waters and <laughs> talked about how um, he's a liar and he's a fraud and he's this and that and he lip-syncs at concerts and um, he supports Putin and Russia and all this and that. And, you know, that's probably in response for all the things that Roger's been running around saying since the war in Ukraine started. You know, basically supporting Putin and um, saying favorable things about Putin and China and Taiwan. And I'm not going to, you know, you can look it up if you want on your own. Do your own research. It's all out there. But, um... Okay, so why am I bringing this up? Well, it's like squabbling since not, since the early 80s, really. Um, you know, they can't get together. They can't make a new album. You know, you think they're going to get along, and they do Live 8, and, um, you know, Roger did the Wall tour. He did that one show with, um, with David Gilmore. And so you think things are getting better, and then, you know, lo and behold, everything blows up again. And so that to me, that's frustrating. And um, you know, it'd be really would have been great to see the the three living members come together and do an album. And that's 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 my point because what have they done? I mean, um, they've done some good solo stuff, like "Amused to Death." Now, this is like an actual real. This is like a real CD, um, and it's pretty good. And it's Roger out on his own doing it with a with a producer and. Um, and you got David Gilmore made this on an island, which I think is pretty good too. It's really calm and peaceful and it's got good songs on it and, uh, it's not perfect. There's a couple rock songs and the rest of it is like the calm side of David Gilmore and Pink Floyd. And I think they screwed up the order of the songs, but that doesn't matter too much. It's pretty good. And, uh. Um, then a couple of years later, he came out with this, Rattle That Lock, which is, it's terrible. Uh, I'll, you know, I don't like, I don't really like any of it. And then Roger, did, Roger did this, uh, in the early, well, he spent like 15 years working on this. It's an opera. I mean, it's terrible too. <laughs> it's just, terrible. so they're wasting our time. Uh, their egos are huge and they can't get along. They can't communicate. They can't collaborate. You know, they, they don't want to try. And, you know, who suffers? The, they suffer, of course, but the fans, the fans are the ones paying for it. You know, we're the ones, um, we're the ones that have been waiting all these years for, for new Pink Floyd content. So that's one, two, three. That's four CDs right there. Um, that could have been four or even more Pink Floyd albums and tours with each one of them had they just been able to get along and go out and get it done. Um, and they didn't. And so that's why it's frustrating. 
But imagine if they would have combined efforts and, and resources and um, collaborated and wrote new material and songs. I mean, how, how good would that have been? It would have been awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I guess, um, I guess don't hold your breath if you think it's going to come together. Um, because I'm pretty sure it's not. I don't think we're ever going to get more Pink Floyd with Roger Waters and David Gilmore in it. And, uh, you know, Nick Mason, despite all of his efforts of being the peacekeeper, you know, if, hasn't helped. And I don't think it's going to help. And I guess I'll I'll just look, um, if, let me know if you agree or if you ever thought they were going to get back together and they didn't. Because there was a period of time there in the late 2000s, you know, before the Dark Side of the Moon tour and the Wall tour that Roger went on. I, th I thought there was a, could have been an opportunity where they'd have got together, but they didn't. And, um, you know... It's well, it's 2023, so I don't I don't think we're gonna see anything <laughs> in the next couple of years. I mean, I could be wrong. You never know. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'll keep making more videos and just leave you know like and like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.